it's time to meet the ancestors. Over the course of this series, Alexander Thin, the seventh Marquis of Bath, has volunteered to lead us back through the branches of his family tree to visit some of his most influential forebears. It's a task for which Lord Bath is well qualified. Not only has he lived here most of his 74 years, surrounded by family lore and legend, but he's also recently published his own memoirs, featuring many stories of the ancient Thin dynasty. Today, we're going back four and a half centuries to when it all began. It was John Thin who first brought the family to Longleat. He was born the son of a common farmer and ended the master of one of the grandest palaces in Europe. And in Tudor times, you didn't get on by being Mr. Nice Guy. John Thin was a typical specimen of the new Protestant breed of rapaciously acquisitive, ruthlessly determined, shrewdly self-interested men on the make within the Tudor court. John left the Shropshire farm of his birth to seek his fortune at court. He got a job working for the Duke of Somerset, who himself had achieved power and wealth as the brother of Jane Seymour, one of Henry VIII's wives. By the time Elizabeth I came to the throne, John Thin was also a wealthy man. Sir John may have been an uncouth, domineering, formidable rogue of ill-gotten wealth, shrewdly cunning and essentially ruthless, but he was now emerging as an eminent Elizabethan. He was nicknamed John the Builder. One of his most lavish projects was to oversee the construction of a sumptuous new palace in London for his master, the Duke of Somerset. But before Somerset House was even finished, both of them were arrested and thrown into the Tower of London. In Tudor times, the politics of court was a deadly business. His enemies said enough things for him to be thrown into the Tower for embezzlement. They executed the other one, Somerset, and um, um, they let him off. And uh, he was a rich man. After that, Sir John spent a lot less time in London and devoted more of his energies to his country estate, Longleat. Originally, there was a priory here, but Henry VIII confiscated it at the time of the Protestant Reformation and sold the property off to the highest bidder. Sir John bought the priory and the surrounding 60 acres for just 53 pounds. A few years later, the old church buildings were destroyed in an accidental fire, but they've never been good enough for Sir John anyway. Uh, he was becoming wealthy very quickly, and um, then I think he learned the lesson that um, court was a dangerous place where you tended to lose your head if you stayed there too long. So he... Uh, had, having bought the plot of land here at Longleat, um, he retired here and um, spent the rest of his life, from mid-50s onwards, uh, to um, build this palace. And it was the first Renaissance palace, or it could be called that, in England. So John the Builder was again planning a very grand house, despite the fact that in Tudor times, ambition could so easily cause a chap to lose his head. We'll find out what happened later on.